Hello, David Harper here of the Bonnock Turtle with uh, an introduction to quantitative finance, a continuation in that series. Here today, a brief refresher or a brief tutorial that introduces logarithms. Logarithms are very important in quantitative finance. They are a key building block, so we don't want to gloss over them. We want to make sure we've got a firm grasp on logarithms. And so I, to do that, I put up here a basic logarithmic function and we can read this as the log base 10 of 100 equals 2. How can we understand that? Well, we can look at the inverse of this logarithmic function. This is a logarithmic function right here. Its inverse is an exponential function. In this case, notice I have three numbers involved here on the top. I also have three in the bottom. 10 squared is equal to 100. That's more intuitive. Well, that helps to explain why the answer here is 2. 2 is the answer of this logarithmic function because 2 is what we need to raise the base, in this case 10, to the power. So 10 raised to what power? Well, the power 2 in order to get 100. So the base raised to the second power gets us the x value. So see how this exponential function, which is the inverse, is really just a restatement here of this logarithmic function. So that generically we can say log base a of x is equal to y because it's true that a raised to the y power is equal to x. So I'll go back to actual numbers now. I used this example, base 10. That's the number base we're comfortable with. There's nothing magic about that. Now I'm going to substitute in for 10 the natural E, which is an irrational number. It's equal to about 2.718, but it's irrational, so that goes on forever. Then now if I use instead of 10 the natural E of the base, I the same rules about the logarithmic function apply, I've just changed the base. So I can still say the log base e of x is equal to y. However, when I say log base e, I'm taking a natural log. That's what we mean by natural log. So it's still true that that natural, if that answer is y, it's still true that e raised to the y power is equal to x. But that natural E has uh, elegant powers for us in finance and elsewhere. And just to clarify, that E is the technically the limit of this function here as n approaches infinity. Just a technical sidebar. Okay, so three key logarithmic functions that we key rules that we want to know and now notice I've got these displayed as the log base a if we these rules still apply for natural logs all the, the only difference is instead of log base e we know that log base a I'm sorry we know that a equals e so it's a natural log but we can take these log base a's and substitute in natural log in all cases it just means again we're using the natural e for the base and these three key rules are very important. This first one, log base A of the product XY is equal to the log of X plus the log of Y. And the second rule, pretty closely related really, the log of X divided by Y is equal to the log of X minus the log of Y. See how we can break down this product and break down this fraction? And here another very uh, classic formula, we'll use this a lot, the log base A of x raised to the yth power is equal to y multiplied by the log of x. So see how what we can do there is pull that y out in front of the log. Turns out that's very handy as we manipulate the algebra. Okay, how do we even start to use this, how do we connect the natural log or the logarithmic function to finance? Well, we've looked at this before. Let me take the simplest example, but there's a lot of applications. So this is just one application. 
what if I said, what is the fair value of $10 today compounded at 5% over three years? But instead of compounding it on a daily or monthly basis, we're going to continuously compound. To answer that, we can use the exponential function, which again I've said is the inverse of the logarithmic function. And we can say, well, the future value is equal to that present value multiplied by e raised to the rate multiplied by the number of years. So that's the generic formula. And to use the specific values here, what we're saying is the future value of $10 today continuously compounded, so e raised to the 5% because that's our annual rate but we're continuously compounding it so it's e raised to the 5% but over three years so it's 5% times 3 or it's really going to be e to the 15% so notice how actually convenient and elegant that is to simply compound the ten dollars forward over three years it's really just one factor e raised to the fifteen percent in this example so if I multiply that out we get about eleven dollars and sixty two cents so what we said is that ten dollars today continuously compounded at 5% over 3 years and that 5% times 3 is 15 so it's e raised to the 15% is equal to $11.62 that's the exponential function remember I said the exponential function is the inverse of the logarithmic function so let's just divide both sides by 10 so it's going to cancel out here and over here I now have this uh, fraction and let's do one more thing let's take the natural log of both sides so what do we have now on the left we have the natural log of an exponential function they're inverses so these cancel each other out really and leave us with the 15 percent and over here we get the natural log so the point of doing this is I wanted to connect these inverse functions the exponential function that we use to compound forward continuously with the natural log which we can use to solve for the continuously compounded rate so let me just pull this if we just look at this right here, I want to pull it up to the top, give myself some space. What we now say is that the natural log of the exponential function of 15% is equal to the natural log of this fraction here. What, remember what I've got in the top here. I've got that the I've got the future value at the end of three years, and here I've got the present value today, ten dollars. And what we said is the natural log of that future value divided by today's value is equal to the 15 percent and you'll recall that is the continuously compounded rate albeit over three years so we would divide that by three to get five percent per year but see how this is to work it in reverse if I said we you're gonna receive eleven dollars and sixty two cents at the end of three years for the ten dollars that you have on deposit today that's in the denominator I lost my cursor what would be the implied continuously compounded return over three years well it turns out to be very simple function you just divide that you take that future value divided by the present value take the natural log so we'll get that's the three-year continuously compounded rate we would then say that's fifteen percent or five percent per year and so here just to put that back into uh, symbolic terms that 15 percent was our continuously compounded rate it's uh, approximately equal to because I did some rounding the natural log of the future value divided by the present value and if we're using stocks for instance we might say it's the natural log of the stock price 